All right, class, settle down. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to be discussing the golden pairing relationship that is the INFP and the ENFJ. Many will say that the INFP and the ENFJ are a perfect match, a match made in heaven. And if you're an INFP and you've, you're in a relationship and they're not an ENFJ, dump them and find an, e an ENFJ immediately. In all seriousness, it is actually like I've noticed with ENFJs that there is an immediate closeness. Um, there's an immediate curiosity and a bond in most cases. I, I was studying film at one point in my life and there was this girl who was an ENFJ. I used to think she was an ENTP. I had to really study MBTI to work out she was an ENFJ. And yeah, she was from Beijing and she was very outlandish. She was very passionate about art and creativity. She really wore her heart on her sleeve. She, she wrote a film about a, a love robot. So these girls found the perfect man, um, but at the end you find out he's a robot, so. One day I'm walking in Chinatown with some friends and she turns up out of the blue and says that she, she was so glad she ran into me because she wants me to play a part in her short film for university. So I said, sure, no worries. So she I got my email and she sent me the script and it was an interesting script because I thought I was just going to be an extra or just play some small role, but I was the uh, love robot in her film. Um, her, you know, she was from Beijing, so her English wasn't fantastic, but I thought, okay, well, whatever, she will be a, a romantic pairing in her film. So she says to meet her and the crew at the beach on this particular day. So I, I get there and she's there alone with the camera. She's like, I'm the crew. Oh, okay. And she needed me to get into the, uh, go into the beach and go and get into the ocean and look sultry. Or so, no, she said salty. She wanted me to look salty and film me looking salty. And I don't know what she meant by that. I mean, the salt water, I suppose. But I also think she meant sultry because she kept using it like, wow, I need you to look more salty, more salty. And I think she meant sexy or something. So I had to just keep getting into the ocean and letting the, the waves go all over me. And um, then, then we uh, went back to my apartment. She said she needs to film me showering. So we did that. And she said, it's very important that I take off all my clothes. Well, I refused actually. And I put on swimming shorts and uh, she just kept filming me. And she's like, more and more shampoo, rub it over your body, more salty, more salty. Okay. So I kept doing that. And then we watched some films. I, I remember watching Borat for some reason on my bed until about midnight. Um, and it got to a point where I was like, oh, I think we're supposed to sleep together. She's sort of getting very comfortable in the bed with me. And, you know, I'm a awkward INFP and I also had no intention of sleep sleeping with her I don't know why I remember thinking though I remember being at the beach with her and sitting and waiting for a train and feeling like why am I so comfortable around her I remember her she was just so easy to talk to and I remember she kept dancing and I don't know I guess naturally ENFJs just make me feel at ease but I also knew that it was I was getting into a troublesome situation but I was confused because the vibes were, were right and then we had one more day of filming where she did bring somebody, an ENFJ, another ENFJ from Sudan, um, who was the cameraman. And uh, she said she needed uh, one more film to be done where I go back to her studio apartment, bringing the Sudanese ENFJ with us, he's filming. And, I just, and I'm the perfect boyfriend in this film because I clean up her apartment and she throws her arms around me and so on. And then I'm about to go, the script ended there. But then she says, oh, there's one more scene and then we're like, oh, what's the other scene? I thought that's the end of the script. And she's like, ah, oh, the sexing, she says. And she looks a bit awkward. And then she starts, takes off her jacket and gets on the bed in her nightgown. And and the and as the um, <laughs> Sudanese NFJ goes, you have to do it for the art, Peter. And I was like, oh God. So he's he has to get up on the bed and I have to fake having sex with her. It was very embarrassing. Um, I did it. And then there was a bit of silence and I, and I, I left. I, I ran into some people at university later and they came up to me. He's like, is it true that this girl had a surprise sex scene for you and you didn't know? And I was like, yeah, that's true. He's like, that's what this guy was saying. He said he was, so the Sudanese guy apparently was extremely awkward about it too. Um, and after that, like, I just, I did get a little bit uncomfortable and the, the film was shown in class and people really loved it. But then she made another film, which was improv where I had to be her boyfriend and it was uh, actually the, the assignment was to do a real life documentary. And she said, you're going to be my boyfriend who's angry at me because um, I've got too many cats breeding in my apartment. And then, you know, I did go back to her apartment and uh, there were indeed kittens everywhere that she had let breed. 
See what I mean about ENFJs? They've got extroverted sensing child and introverted sensing blind spot. So I think as an INFP, you get maybe overly cautious, but I think that caution can be good when you've got an ENFJ who's a bit chaotic like this. Now we filmed a scene where she said, you have to yell at me and get really angry at me because of like we're in a relationship. And I, I'm pretty good at improvising. So I did that. But I dropped out of university and I started avoiding her. She always had some reason for me to come back to her bedroom. She needs help with Photoshop. Can you give me a lesson back at my place? And I'd go and I'd feel really uncomfortable. I distanced myself from that ENFJ because I felt like she always has some... I always felt like there's something off-putting about the, the plotting to get me alone and try and make me her partner. And years later, she had new films. She would tell me she needs and you know I started ignoring her calls over the years I did see her one day on the street and she had married a very she was about 22 and she married some guy an Australian guy who was in his 60s I also had my Japanese ENFJ friend again always trying to lift me up he, he saw that I had a YouTube channel he wanted to make me the most famous YouTuber he was in some of my YouTube videos I went back to Japan with him and we did these uh vox pop videos and one of the videos is really popular as a result of him just he was so driven by trying to make my youtube channel um, popular and why is he doing it he was doing it to lift me up it's the classic thing enfj really wants to lift up the infp and sometimes he would finally just get angry at me and say everything is too hard for you everything is a problem for you peter son i've told this story in another youtube video um he wanted my he was really big on like if you want to be successful on youtube you've got to make your youtube channel about sex how to pick up girls and he would give me pie charts and email them to me about statistics St statistically there are more people on youtube who want advice on how to pick up girls and of course i'm not going to do that i'm an infp i'm not going to be a pickup artist and he made his own pickup artist japanese channel and now he's quite successful so good on you enfj from japan i think i'm going to meet him this year actually see what i mean though like it doesn't matter how much um I push away from him. He'll always be there to send me nice messages year after year. It's almost 10 years since I met him. There was another ENFJ I once met uh, while on a Europe trip, actually. I was traveling all over Europe and uh, she was in Berlin. And once again, just met up with her and it was like very warm and easy to talk to her. And it was a really great feeling. And again, I think it was the INFP, ENFJ um, bond that we had she took me to a Filipino cafe and then she said she wanted to go and see the sunset at this beautiful lake that she loves in Berlin because she was from America but she was just traveling in Europe and so we went to this uh lake as the sun setting back in 2017 and then I look around and there's all these like naked guys around the lake and women it was a nude it was a sort of hippie nudist lake and she like she looked down and then she just sort of takes off all her clothes a bit awkward and nervously but she does it so now she's I've only really just known I've only just met her really and now she's uh, naked next to me and I was a bit uncomfortable but I took my shirt off but then I think she wanted things to escalate and I kind of didn't and then I changed my mind with my SI child I was like this isn't something I do and I sort of pulled back a little bit wanted to just uh, slow down things a little bit as we walk around the lake and she got angry at me and she, she just said like, do you want to, you know, do something to me or not? And I said, I, I don't know. I was just, it was all too much for me as an INFP guy. And I'm glad I didn't do anything in that scenario. Um, and then it, that hurt her. And then she went off and found a, she said, oh, I've got to go to a party now. Sorry, I can't, no guests allowed. I'm like, that's okay. And I just wandered around Berlin by myself and I felt fine. I felt fine. I went and got a burger and a beer at midnight. I talked to some drug dealer outside the hostel in Rosa Luxemburg Platz, and I flew back to London the next morning. What does that story tell us? <laughs> I don't know. I will say that every healthier ENFJ I know has something that they do to get that SE out of their system without having to be completely debauched. You know, they go scuba diving or they, you know, scuba diving's a big one I've noticed with a lot of ENFJs or my other ENFJ friend, she um, loves going on ships, doing things with ropes, like, you know, like a pirate life. Oh, actually, before I end the video, I'll also say that there are ENFJs from high school, a lot of guys I know who are ENFJs who are really the greatest guys. 
When I was in high school, I um, passed out in one class while watching Fatal Attraction and I was mocked horribly by this. Everyone's like, oh, Peter's afraid of blood. And, you know, one guy was bleeding. And they thrust him over to me hoping I'd pass out and I didn't. But people really were upset at me for passing out. They were like, you. It was like the worst, you know, I was at an all boys school, super masculine environment. The fact that I passed out during a film about a woman with BPD. And there's a reason, <laughs> I've got my own reasons why I would have passed out during a film like that. But um, there's one ENFJ guy who rushed over to me. I didn't really know him. I know he's an ENFJ now because he stayed in touch with me, but we weren't friends at this point. And he ran up to me, big, big ENFJ guy. He's like, where's Peter? You fucking legend. And he hugs me and he's like, oh, it's been a while since we had a decent KO at this school, a decent knockout, you know? So um, ever since then, he's just, he, he always tracks down my YouTube videos and he tracks down anything I do and he just supports me and reckons I'm awesome. So ENFJs are great, actually, in that sense. If you're an INFP, they, they will look out for you and just think that you're awesome and just keep telling you you're awesome. And sometimes that's exactly what INFPs need to hear, I, I guess. And they seem to do it from a genuine place, actually. I don't even I don't even think it's fake flattery. I think ENFJs are very inspired by INFPs. And I'm secretly inspired by ENFJs, but it's a bit harder for me to admit it. All right, I'll end the video here. I've been wanting to make a video about ENFJs for ages, but I just... Uh, I've got too many stories and none of them really lead up to anything. I don't know what point I'm making in this video really. Are they or are they not the perfect match? I would say yes, they're the perfect match, but uh, beware. I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't see myself being with an ENFJ actually. <laughs> I really don't, I'm too old for that. But it could happen. I'm not, I'm not looking, I've got my own problem. I've got my own people I'm hung up on anyway. Don't worry about it, bye bye.